Good morning. It's Friday, June 5th. Welcome to the end of the work week. At least that's what we hope it is for most all of you. Today we're still talking about the word faithfulness. I've also looked up the word faithful because I like that too. Um, I found three psalms, a few verses in one, and two whole psalms I would like to share with you today. Psalm 12 and Psalm 13 are both psalms of David, and I would like to share these with you. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Help, O Lord, for there is no longer anyone who is godly. The faithful have disappeared from humankind. They utter lies to each other with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that makes great boast, and those who say, with our tongues we will prevail, our lips are our own. Who is our master? Because the poor are despoiled, because the needy groan, I will now rise up, says the Lord. I will place them in the safety for which they long. The promises of the Lord are promises that are pure silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. You, O Lord, will protect us. You will guard us from this generation forever. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A few years ago, I led a Bible study using Walter Brueggemann's The Prophetic Imagination. And in that, he describes what we see over and over again in the Old Testament When the people rise up and the people say they want a king and then they rise up against their king because the king is not looking out for the welfare of the people. That's the number one thing a king is supposed to do. Now some kings in scripture do a pretty good job of that, but no king is completely successful. Most of them are inadequate and I would say most of Our leaders are inadequate. And so it has to do with who do we trust? Who do we turn to? And as the psalmist shows us, the cries go nowhere when they go out to those who are in their authority. And so the cries increase in volume. They no longer become on the margins, but they come in to the mainstream. And that is what we are seeing. And when they get into the mainstream, the cries go up to God because God is really the only one who can make a way where there is no way. Now, the racial divide and the racism that we have seen in this country for generation upon generation is nothing new. It's just that we see it on TV now. We see it because of cell phones. The reality is, it's always been there. So, when I say only God can fix this kind of situation, and no king is adequate because God is the real king, and when we cry, how long, O Lord, and then we remember after all the lament and wailing and the rising up of voices, remembering that it is God's salvation, God's faithfulness that will stay with us, that will show us the way where there is no way. 
I believe that now we need to have God's people be that leader, be the ones who can show and help work together for a way that is God's way. We pray for a way forward, a way together, a way of peace. It reminds me of another um, scripture, this one from Psalm 85. Uh, I want to read to you Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13, and especially for you to focus on um, verses 10 and 11. Listen now for the word of the Lord again. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. And righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Now, this is the word of the Lord. It's not only about believing, but belief without action is merely words. And so the need to join together, to bring about peace together, to listen to one another, to be together so that God can be glorified because we call ourselves Christian and so we are called to act as Christians and to show that to the world, to show love and forgiveness and caring and kindness, to give voice to all people. And so God calls us and meets us in the street with steadfast love and faithfulness so that righteousness may rain down from the sky. I can think of nothing more beautiful and nothing more hard because it's going to take action upon everyone's part and it's going to take um, the church being the body of Christ, being a beacon for God's hope that ends that lament psalm with hope and steadfast love. And so as we reflect this day, I hope that you will remember that there are faithful in the land. May you be among them. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you help us to provide ways and means for those who feel like they have not been heard to be heard, for those who feel the wrong and the pain and the suffering, the load upon generation after generation of being oppressed. We ask that you call us into action, call us to stand by one another, to be faithful, to make friendships, to listen and to care. And we ask that you prepare our hearts and our minds and our bodies because it will be hard work. And yet with you, with your spirit guiding and leading us, we can do this. We can make the world a better place. And it begins with each one of us. Help us, O oh God, so that we might glorify you. In Christ's name, amen.